The raging ocean waves are rapidly cut by the shark's huge tail fin. The main character named Tyler tells a girl named Sophia not to give up and keep rowing. Tyler notices a huge shark swimming closer and closer to them. Tyler mentally tells himself that if things continue like this, they will both die here. Thinking that he will have to take a risk, Tyler takes the board from Sophia's hands, but she does not understand his intentions. Sophia screams Tyler's name, mentally begging him not to kill her, crying that she wants to live. The shark emerges from the water, revealing a huge mouth full of sharp teeth. Sophia begins to drown while Tyler hits the shark's face with his board as hard as he can, preventing it from biting them. The shark stares at Tyler for a moment before diving deep into the water. Noticing that Sophia is drowning, the shark heads towards her, completely forgetting about Tyler. Quickly approaching Sophia, the shark opens its huge mouth again to eat Sophia in one go. Sophia begins to choke, looking up with the last thoughts that she wants to live. Suddenly, the shark's sense of smell catches the alluring scent of human blood. Meanwhile, Tyler rips a piece of wood off the board and wraps his wound in preparation for the dive. Saltwater inevitably gets into his wound and he screams in severe pain. Gathering his strength, Tyler dives deep, distracting the shark with his bleeding wound. The shark instantly loses interest in Sophia and rushes in pursuit of Tyler. Having caught up with him, she opens her mouth to bite off Tyler's legs in an instant. However, Tyler manages to dodge, causing the shark to snap its teeth and expose itself to attack. Tyler thrusts a wooden shard into the shark's black eye with all his might. The shark tries to escape from unbearable pain and thereby allows Tyler to cut a deep wound in it. The shark rushes back and forth for some time, but soon slows down and begins to smoothly sink to the bottom. Having defeated the dangerous predator, Tyler quickly surfaces to help Sophia. Sophia, meanwhile, continues to choke, gradually losing consciousness. She mentally calls for help, closing her eyes from the severe lack of oxygen and strength to emerge on her own. The last thing she sees before completely losing consciousness is Tyler's silhouette quickly floating towards her. Tyler notices that Sophia has lost consciousness and speeds up, concentrating all his strength. The main character quickly gets to the girl and manages to catch her before she goes to the bottom. Taking her with one hand, Tyler rushes to the surface to pull Sophia to shore as quickly as possible. Tyler pulls Sophia ashore, laying her on the sand hot from the bright sun. Sophia comes to her senses, starting to cough up the water that has accumulated in her lungs. Sophia wipes her mouth with her hand, feeling something pressing in her chest. Looking down, Sophia notices that Tyler is giving her chest compressions. Tyler looks at her questioningly and continues to press with both hands on her chest in the area of the heart. In extreme embarrassment, Sophia screams loudly, calling Tyler a pervert and slapping him. After a while, Sophia apologizes to Tyler, saying that she didn't realize at first that he was giving her CPR. Tyler turns away from Sophia, saying that he did more than just artificial respiration, causing Sophia to misunderstand. Tyler adds that they both studied medicine, so this question seems strange to him. Sophia is embarrassed again, looks away and tells Tyler that she is very grateful to him. Looking around, she asks Tyler about where they are now, however. He honestly admits that he has no idea. Sophia asks Tyler if his phone is still working, to which he replies that his phone is working, but there is no signal. Sophia suggests that Tyler write to the rescue service, however. He reminds her that there is no signal. Sophia, with a smart look, tells Tyler that you can write to the rescue service even without a SIM card. Sophia takes Tyler's phone, saying that she will write to the rescue service herself. The girl sends a message for help, however. It is marked as undeliverable. Sophia and Tyler spend a few seconds in awkward silence, looking at the phone. Unfazed, she turns to Tyler and tells him that his phone is broken. However, during this time, Tyler already manages to climb onto a palm tree and asks her from there why she thinks so. Tyler notes that they could write to the rescue service even without a SIM card if the phone was in range of the network. Sophia asks him what they should do, adding that they must somehow understand where they are and call for help. Tyler looks around for people, but suddenly something catches his attention. Without explanation, he shouts at Sophia to be very quiet. Sophia gets angry at Tyler and asks him why he shut her up, adding that she was almost eaten by a shark. She continues to be indignant. However, Tyler quickly runs up to her and covers her mouth with his hand, asking her to shut up. Tyler looks intently in the direction where he saw suspicious activity earlier. Suddenly, a sharp spear flies at them from the thickets, but Tyler manages to grab Sophia and dodge. 
The spear crashes into the sand at great speed and gets stuck in it for some time, continuing to twitch. Sophia lies on the ground and asks Tyler in surprise what just happened. Tyler and Sophia look into the thickets, hearing some rustling in them and the sound of approaching steps. A few seconds later, three aborigines armed with primitive weapons emerge from the thicket. The natives are hostile and begin to shout something in their own language, approaching the heroes threateningly. Tyler is mentally surprised that there are locals here, but decides to ask them how they are doing. The main character hopes that the natives will tell them where they are, but they rush to attack screaming. Tyler is surprised by such hostility, but at the last moment he dodges a spear strike. The natives launch unsuccessful attacks on Tyler one by one, while he is still trying to talk to them in different languages. The main native is pretty annoyed that they are unable to inflict any damage on Tyler. With a loud shout, he points at Tyler, ordering the others to attack. Tyler asks the natives to stop, not understanding what he has done to annoy their tribe. A native with a spear tries to wound Tyler by striking multiple blows with his spear, but he easily dodges. The leader of the natives decides to attack Tyler from behind while he is distracted by an enemy with a spear. Tyler understands that it is time to end the negotiations, and with a slight movement he grabs the spear. He forcefully pulls the spear towards himself, thereby blocking the attack of the native leader. Taking advantage of the opponent's delay, Tyler decides to kick the leader. With a powerful blow, Tyler breaks his opponent's nose and makes him stagger back. While the leader temporarily loses his fighting ability, Tyler tries to snatch the spear from his opponent. Tyler pulls the spear forcefully towards himself, preparing to knock out his opponent with a powerful blow to the face. Sophia notices the impending danger and yells at Tyler to be careful. The third native finally gets to Tyler and attacks him with a spear, inflicting a gash on his side. Tyler finds himself surrounded, telling himself that they definitely want to kill him. Meanwhile, one of the natives suddenly rushes in the other direction, ignoring Tyler. The native targets Sophia, who screams and tries to run away. However, the savage quickly overtakes Sophia and hits her in the back with the back of his spear. Sophia loses her balance and falls onto the sand, screaming in severe pain. The girl props herself up on her elbows, coughing up sand and saying that she can barely breathe. The savage decides to finish off Sophia by raising a huge spear over her, emitting terrible screams. Sophia screams Tyler's name, begging him for salvation and closes her eyes, feeling the blood splattering on her face. Tyler manages to get to the native and pierces him through with a spear. The lifeless body of the native falls heavily right in front of Sophia and she screams in horror. Tyler steps forcefully on the savage's corpse, pressing down on it with his foot to pull out the spear. After several attempts, he successfully removes the weapon from his opponent's corpse while looking around. Tyler shakes his spear to clear it of blood and heads towards the other natives. The native leader lets out a battle cry and recklessly rushes forward towards Tyler. However, Tyler only meets the native with a spear to the throat, also piercing him through with one blow. While the leader of the savages is dying a painful death, Tyler stretches his hand saying that the last enemy remains. To finish off the last native, Tyler decides to pick up the leader's weapon lying on the ground. The last remaining native lets out a hesitant cry as Tyler chooses his moment to strike. Finding the right moment, Tyler throws the knife at his opponent with force. The native manages to block the attack and Tyler's knife bounces off the spear and falls to the ground. However, Tyler decides to take advantage of the native's momentary delay and delivers a powerful knee blow to his face. From a strong blow, the native loses his weapon and goes flying, falling onto the sand. Given a small window of opportunity, Tyler throws a bone knife at the fallen native. With a well-aimed throw, Tyler hits his opponent's head and turns around to check if there are other threats nearby. Sophia is still shaking from the shock she has experienced and looks at Tyler, saying his name. Tyler looks at Sophia, realizing that she is scared to death and mentally reasoning that she grew up in greenhouse conditions. Sophia asks Tyler if he is real, to which he answers in the affirmative. The girl looks at Tyler enthusiastically and asks him when he became so cool. Sophia emphasizes that Tyler has just dealt with three grown men, adding that he recently dealt with a huge shark, Sophia says that she can become a witness for Tyler's defense in court, adding that she will easily confirm that he killed the natives in self-defense. Tyler listens to his companion and a kind of grin appears on his face in response to her words. Sophia asks Tyler why he is laughing, to which he responds with a counter-question about whether Sophia is scared. 
The girl admits that if it weren't for Tyler, the natives would have killed her, and then asks where Tyler got all these skills, adding that he doesn't look like an ordinary medical student at all. Tyler admits to Sophia that before entering university, he served in the army for several years. Tyler remembers his past, in which a pharmaceutical tycoon gives him an assignment during which Tyler must pretend to be an ordinary university student. The employer hands Tyler a photograph of the girl, saying that his only task will be to protect her. Tyler also recalls that before he could get close to the protected object, an explosion occurred on the cruise ship. Tyler doesn't know if this explosion was faked, but he hopes that this girl will be lucky and hold out until he gets to her. Tyler takes a bone knife from the body of a defeated enemy and begins to chop coconuts. Sophia approaches the palm tree where Tyler is sitting and warns him that someone is swimming towards them. Tyler peers into the distance and notices a small life raft on the water with a group of people on it. Sophia assumes that these are other survivors and is about to go to them, but Tyler stops her, asking her not to go into the water. Sharks begin to circle in large numbers around the life raft with three survivors. The survivors begin to panic over the fact that the sharks keep coming and coming. Sophia watches this frightening sight and says that the situation looks terrible. Tyler looks around trying to find a way to help the survivors and focuses his attention on the dead bodies of the natives. The main character grabs the savage's body and goes into the water with it, telling Sophia to stay on the shore. Having walked further, Tyler begins to swim with the body towards a large school of sharks. The sharks sense the blood wafting through the water from the dead native and shift their attention. Tyler notices changes in the shark's behavior and rejoices at his success, planning an escape route. Noticing that the sharks are getting closer, Tyler begins to turn around, leaving his lifeless body in the water. A few seconds later, Tyler kicks off the dead native. The sharks swim closer to the dead man while Tyler swims to safety. Having caught his breath a little, Tyler mentally notes that now it is necessary to do the same with the second corpse. In the shallow water, Sophia is already waiting for him, who dragged up the next corpse, saying that she decided to help Tyler, after which he mentally admits to himself that he underestimated her. The survivors are incredibly happy that the sharks are swimming away from them and they are safe for a while. They decide to take advantage of the gift of fate and row to the shore as quickly as possible. While the sharks are busy devouring the bodies of the natives, the survivors lean on the oars with all their might and get to the shore. The survivors land on the island and Tyler cuts some coconuts from a palm tree to greet them. Sophia approaches the surviving woman, calling her the leader and asking her if she is okay. The leader stands up and thanks Sophia and Tyler for their help, noting that if it weren't for them, their group would most likely have died. Sophia asks the head where the rest of the students and teachers went. The manager sadly changes his face and says that she has no good news on this matter. According to her, the situation was too chaotic, and only a few were able to reach the lifeboats. She adds that during the fire there was turmoil everywhere and people for the most part were unable to coordinate. She also recalls that immediately after the explosion a storm began and in the end, only the three of them managed to climb onto this boat. Sophia can hardly believe what is happening while one of the survivors says that he did not expect to see her here. He introduces himself as Charles, saying that they took a nutrition course together, adding that he is very grateful to her for saving her. Sophia points at Tyler, saying that they should all be grateful to him, but she only helped a little. Charles extends his hand to Tyler, smiling widely and thanking him for saving him. They shake hands and Charles asks Tyler what he threw into the sea to distract the sharks. Without allowing Tyler to answer, Charles says that it seemed to him that they were people. The other two survivors are surprised by what they hear and look at Tyler in shock. Tyler calmly replies that he dumped the bodies of local residents into the water. The survivors are even more frightened by this situation and look at Tyler with horror. Charles nervously asks Tyler if he killed civilians to distract the sharks. Tyler replies that it is better to feed the dead to the sharks than to let them eat the living. All the new arrivals are frozen in deep shock and Charles squeezes out the words that Tyler's actions are simply terrible. Sophia shouts at Tyler that he is burying himself, after which he turns to the survivors and says that these savages themselves attacked them, so Tyler had to defend himself. Charles says that for the sake of their overall safety, restrictive measures must be taken against Tyler. He reasons that Tyler should not be allowed to move freely and out of their sight. He also adds that Tyler needs to be tied up before they go to bed.
Charlie approaches Sophia and tells her that he will definitely protect her, to which she sarcastically remarks that she does not need it. Sophia asks the survivors what's wrong with them, adding that if Tyler hadn't saved them, they would have been feeding sharks a long time ago. Charles continues to insist that Tyler has killed people and adds that this makes him unpredictable and dangerous. Tyler looks at Charles and tells him not to worry so much. He adds that if Charles thinks he is dangerous, he will happily send him back to sea. Sophia yells at Charles, telling him to stop talking nonsense because he didn't see what happened here. The girl adds that she has already explained everything, adding that Tyler was defending himself from savages who were trying to kill them and did not want to make contact at all. The leader adds that Tyler saved them from sharks, offering at least in gratitude to show more trust in him. Charles is silent for a while, after which he snorts displeasedly under his breath. However, after a split second, he smiles widely, saying that he agrees with the leader, after which he apologizes to Tyler, saying that he was too nervous. He approaches Sophia again and says that he was worried about her, adding that she is a girl and it will be better if she is surrounded only by reliable people. Sophia doesn't respond to Charles's pleasantries while the other survivor decides to introduce herself. The survivor introduces himself as Alex, saying that he works for a construction company and holds the position of member of the board of supervisors. Alex asks Tyler if he has a plan for further action, to which he replies that he would be happy to listen to his proposal. Alex says that they don't know when help will arrive, which means the top priorities should be figuring out the situation on the island and finding drinking water and food. He suggests they go into the forest before it gets dark, as during their search they may stumble upon other survivors or find a way to leave the island. The manager asks Sophia what she thinks about this, however. She confidently replies that she will follow Tyler anywhere. Tyler mentally tells himself that there is too little food and drinking water near the shore, unlike the jungle, but in the depths of the forest, they will most likely stumble upon savages. After weighing the pros and cons, Tyler tells Sophia and the manager that he does not recommend that they go into the forest so quickly, since it is too dangerous there. The leader tells Alex that Tyler may be right, adding that if they go into the forest, they may encounter wild doors or locals. Alex says that in his opinion, Madam Leader is exaggerating, since large animals are unlikely to live on this island. He also adds that if they meet with local residents, he will be able to negotiate with them if he behaves friendly. Charles agrees with Alex, saying that savages are ordinary, narrow-minded people with whom it is easy to find a common language. Sophia loses her temper and starts screaming at the survivors, saying that she just explained everything to them. Tyler shields Sophia and tells the other survivors that he understands their point of view. Tyler picks up the bone knife and says that killing a person is still considered murder. After that, he approaches Charles and says that it doesn't matter whether you killed one person or five because you will still be considered a murderer. Tyler comes even closer and swings the bone knife with force, looking at Charles menacingly. The manager screams Tyler's name in fear and asks him not to do this. Charles covers his face with his hands and loudly asks for help from those around him. Tyler delivers a powerful blow with a knife that whistles through the air around him. Charles opens his eyes and notices that Tyler has cut the coconut in half with a bone knife. Tyler hands half a coconut to the manager, inviting her to drink some of the juice. After this, Tyler gives the knife to Alex and asks him if he would like to try it too, to which he agrees. Alex takes a knife and cuts the coconut, saying that he still thinks they shouldn't just sit here and wait for something. He adds that they have no food or water, and even with these coconuts, they won't last long. Tyler notices a cut on his side and says he remembered something very important. He takes out a wolf fang, saying that he borrowed it from one of the aborigines who attacked them. Alex carefully examines the wolf's fang, and then says that he does not believe that they are the only survivors because there were too many people on the liner. He again expresses his assumption that they should go into the forest at a minimum in order to find other survivors. Tyler mentally tells himself that if he went there alone, he would be able to find out what was going on there. However, if they go there together, his hands will be tied. Tyler agrees, saying that they can go into the forest, but they must move very carefully and slowly. Sometime later, Tyler, armed with a spear, carefully leads a group of survivors into the jungle. Alex notes that there are several types of Chinese palm trees here, pointing his finger at each of them. The leader, who began to be called by the name Sally, tells Alex that he knows a lot, to which he laughs it off, 
saying that he just often went hiking. Suddenly, a hare jumps out of the bushes in front of a group of survivors and immediately disappears away. Alex tells the survivors that this hare needs to be caught urgently and goes in pursuit of the small animal. Tyler stops Sophia, telling her not to rush, as they will only waste their energy catching the elusive animal. He adds that in such a jungle there is a lot of vegetation, which will greatly slow them down, adding that even he is not sure that he could catch this hare. After a while, Tyler and Sophia hear loud screams and decide to check what happened. Sophia replies that from the sound it was Charles and the manager screaming. Sophia tells Tyler that they could be in danger and suggests that he hurry, but he replies that this is not necessary. Sophia doesn't understand Tyler's cold attitude and asks him why he feels that way. However, Tyler explains his point of view casually, saying that they will get to them themselves. After these words, Charles runs out at Tyler and Sophia, followed by Alex and Sally. Charles shouts for everyone to run towards the shore, while Sophia looks at them and does not understand what is happening. Tyler grabs Sophia's hand and begins to run towards the shore while she turns back. At the end of the column runs the leader, for whom this pursuit is becoming more and more difficult. Due to inattention and stress, Sally catches a piece of driftwood with her foot. Sally trips over a heavy snag and lands in the grass at full speed. Sophia tries to break free from Tyler, saying that she must help the manager. A few seconds later, the thing that so frightened the group of survivors runs out of the bushes, and Sophia looks in horror at the huge boar. The angry hog immediately notices the helpless Sally and rushes straight at her. The boar lets out a loud squeal as it quickly approaches the unfortunate girl. Tyler lets Sophia go and rushes to save the helpless leader. He shouts to the rest of the group of survivors to run without stopping, while he himself speeds up to get to Sally's aid. Charles catches up with Sophia and blocks her path to the other survivors, loudly distracting her. He extends his hand to her and says that he will lead her out, but Sophia ignores him and runs past saying that she is going to help Tyler. Charles gets even angrier and mentally curses Tyler with every curse he knows. Meanwhile, Tyler catches up with Sally and asks her to give him her hand as quickly as possible. Sally extends her hand towards Tyler, sincerely thanking him for saving her. However, Tyler quickly and firmly grabs Sally's supervisor by the shoulder. Tyler pulls the leader over himself, throwing her back to the survivors who came to the rescue. Sophia and Charles catch the leader, asking her if she's okay. Tyler asks the survivors why they are still here and reminds them that he told them to run away without looking back. Tyler prepares to fight the boar, but suddenly someone pushes him in the back, forcing him to lose his balance. The wild boar chooses Tyler as his new target and picks up speed again, preparing to ram his opponent. The accelerated boar quickly closes the distance and jumps on Tyler, preparing to kill him with one blow. Tyler pauses for a moment, waiting, trying to figure out all the possible options. Recovering in time, he manages to dodge, making a flip jump over the boar. The boar runs over Tyler, ramming only ferns and air with its huge carcass. Tyler lands on the ground, somersaulting, and checks himself for injuries. He discovers that the boar managed to graze him with its tusks, leaving a large cut on his chest. The boar turns to face Tyler, but immediately spots Sophia and Sally. The animal again emits an animal cry and prepares for a new swift attack. Sophia is frightened by the wild beast and freezes in chilling and binding horror. The boar chooses Sophia as its target and again begins to pick up speed to attack. Tyler points out that this boar weighs at least 300 kilograms, so if it crashes into Sophia it will definitely kill her. With thoughts that he should not let Sophia die, he rushes to the rescue again. The boar again lets out a piercing squeal and quickly approaches Sophia. Sophia stands helplessly in place and can only utter a desperate cry for help. Tyler manages to reach Sophia and pushes her to the side, removing her from the boar's line of attack. However, because of this, he has to take the blow on himself, which causes him to fly back several meters. Falling to the ground, Tyler flips several times before finally stopping. The boar slows down briefly, examining Tyler's motionless body. Tyler spits out the blood and starts going through his options again. The boar decides to finish off Tyler and begins to pick up speed again to ram. Sophia and Sally scream to Tyler in horror that the boar is very close. The boar again lets out a piercing scream and approaches Tyler almost closely. However, Tyler manages to dodge at the last moment, causing the boar to crash into a tree at full speed. A powerful collision with a tree stuns the boar, and it falls to the ground unconscious. Tyler looks at the defeated beast, coughing up blood again, 
and decides to deal with it here and now. Sophia asks Tyler if he is okay, but he asks them to keep quiet and hide. Tyler tells himself that if he doesn't figure out how to deal with him quickly, he will either die or remain crippled. Charles watches Tyler from the bushes and laments that he did not die after his encounter with the boar. He looks closely at Sophia again, remembering that at the university he never found the courage to confess to her. Based on his memories, he could only attend the same courses and watch her from the shadows, but now, being on the same island with her, he had a chance. Charles is unhappy that Tyler is in his life and believes that if he is gone, Sophia will rely only on him. Charles concludes that he must kill Tyler to win Sophia's affections. Meanwhile, the boar comes to his senses and attacks Tyler again, and he tries to let him get closer. At the last moment, Tyler dodges the wild beast again, giving him a small window to attack. Tyler takes advantage of the boar's disorientation and accurately throws his bone knife. The knife is thrust into the boar's hind leg and gets stuck there, causing the animal to bleed and suffer severe pain. The wild boar begins to squeal piercingly from the piercing pain in his leg. He turns to Tyler and goes berserk with unbearable pain and indomitable rage towards his offender. Tyler is surprised that the animal is still standing and again tries to figure out what to do. The boar lunges at Tyler again, kicking up dust under its heavy hooves. Tyler decides to use a proven method and runs away from the boar towards a tree. Sophia watches Tyler excitedly, screaming in worry and fear. Tyler again lets the boar get as close as possible and bounces off the tree. Without having time to break, the boar crashes into a tree at full speed, again briefly stunning him. Tyler lands behind the boar and prepares to finish off his dangerous opponent. He forcefully pulls the bone knife out of the boar's carcass and approaches the beast's head. With thoughts that it is urgent to finish off the enemy, Tyler begins to deliver multiple blows to the neck and head of the boar. The boar refuses to die so easily and begins to shake its head, trying to reach Tyler with its fangs. Finding the right moment, the boar grabs a bone knife with its teeth, blocking Tyler's attacks. However, Tyler lands a powerful kick to the boar's face, causing it to drop the knife and stumble back. Taking advantage of the moment, Tyler quickly jumps onto the boar's back to protect himself from possible attacks. Tyler remembers that the boars have a weak point just above their eyes and tries to find it, delivering multiple blows with his fists. Tyler wonders where a wild animal has so much strength and continues to punch it. Sophia comes to Tyler's aid in the company of Alex and Supervisor Sally. They run up to the wild boar and hold its legs so that it cannot resist. Tyler concentrates all his strength and delivers many blows to the boar's weak point. After some time, the boar finally weakens its resistance, and the group of survivors can relax a little. Tyler, noticing that the beast has stopped moving, finally calms down, raising his bloody fists. All survivors sit on the grass and exhale tiredly, gradually catching their breath. Raising the bone knife, Tyler finally finishes off the boar, plunging the knife between the wild animal's eyes. Exhaling heavily, Tyler expresses his joy that the boar is finally dead. Sophia asks Tyler how he is feeling, to which he replies that he is fine. Sophia notices Tyler's serious wound and says he needs to stop the bleeding as soon as possible. Charles peeks out from behind a tree and tells Tyler that he is very cool for taking down such a huge boar. Charlie expresses hope that they will have roast pork for dinner tonight. Tyler comes closer to Charles and kicks him hard in the body, throwing him a couple of meters. Falling to the ground from the weight of the blow, Charlie grabs his side and asks Tyler why he did it. Tyler glares down at Charles and accuses him of trying to kill him. Charles says he doesn't understand the accusations, saying they are baseless. Tyler reminds Charles that he was the one who pushed him in the back towards the boar. Charles tells Tyler that he had it all wrong, adding that he had no thoughts of killing him. Tyler ignores Charles' excuses and throws his bone knife in front of him. He tells Charles that if he really wants to kill him, then he will give him this opportunity. Sophia tells Charles that Tyler saved him earlier, wondering why Charles decided to repay him in this way. Charles continues to prevaricate, saying that he never meant to hurt Tyler. Tyler says that if Charles doesn't want to grab a weapon, then he will, and then reaches for the knife. Charles suddenly changes his face and quickly grabs the knife, taking it from Tyler. Charles takes a threatening stance, preparing to strike with a bone knife. Choosing the right moment, Charles swings his knife and delivers a quick, sweeping blow. However, Tyler manages to parry Charles's attack, knocking it off with a quick kick. Before Charles has time to come to his senses, the trailer quickly knocks the bone knife out of his hand. Tyler lands a hard elbow to Charles's body, causing him to stumble back again.
Charles, under the force of the blow, crashes his back into a tree standing behind him and falls to the ground. He tries to catch his breath, clearing his throat due to the intense pain in his lungs and back. A split second later, Tyler raises the bone knife and stabs Charles in the shoulder. Charles screams loudly from the searing, piercing pain, feeling hot blood running down his shirt. Sally's boss asks Tyler if he is sure Charles was specifically trying to kill him. The leader mentally reflects that they are all students of the same university, hoping in the future to explain to them that human life is not a joke and asks Tyler to spare Charles. Tyler approaches the pain Charles and says that he did not mean to kill him. He removes the knife from Charles's wound, adding that if he wanted to, he would have stabbed him in the throat or head. Charles again tries to justify himself, saying that he didn't mean to, but Tyler says that he's letting Charles go just this once. He turns and says that next time he won't even listen to Charles, but will simply kill him. Sophia stops Tyler and tells him that he has a huge wound on his chest, urging him to urgently treat it. Tyler looks at the dead boar and says that the smell of death will attract even more animals, so they urgently need to find vines to drag it to the beach and skin it. Alex agrees with Tyler's proposal, mentally admitting that he is disappointed in Charles, appreciating Tyler's determination and caring. After some time, a group of survivors finds the vines and begins to synchronously pull the boar towards the shore. The leader holds the wounded Charles while Tyler, Alex, and Sophia try to drag the boar. Having finally pulled out the boar, Sophia sits on the sand, rejoicing that everything worked out for them, while Tyler begins to stagger painfully. Tyler tries to understand what is happening to him, pressing his hand to his head in severe pain. Within seconds, Tyler loses consciousness and begins to fall to the ground. Alex and Sophia approach Tyler and discover that he has a high fever. Sophia picks up Tyler's shirt and notices that his wound is starting to look much worse. He approaches Sophia and asks about what happened to Tyler, to which he answers that his inflammation began early. Alex is afraid that the wound could be fatal in the absence of medicine, adding that there was probably a whole bunch of dangerous microorganisms on the tusks of that boar. Sophia asks Tyler if he is conscious or not, saying that they urgently need to treat his wound. Tyler says he just needs to get some sleep, assuring him that he'll be fine once he starts. Sophia yells at Tyler, saying that if the wound gets infected, he could get tetanus, which will definitely lead to his death. Tyler tells Sophia not to worry, assuring him that he will be fine. He loses consciousness, and Alex notes that his temperature has become even higher, saying that the wound needs to be decontaminated as soon as possible. Sophia asks Alex about how to disinfect the wound, saying that they don't even have clean water. After thinking a little, Alex asks Sophia if she is Tyler's girlfriend. He says there is a very old-fashioned way to clean and disinfect a wound. Sophia, with fire in her eyes, asks Alex what kind of method this is. Alex says that the wound needs to be washed with urine and hands her an empty coconut shell. Sophia recalls lessons in medical school that taught that if a wound is not treated with an antiseptic, it can become infected which leads to inflammation. She also recalls that in these classes, it was said that in emergency situations, in the absence of clean water, you can use the middle part of urine to wash the wound. In addition to everything else, she recalls that it is necessary to remember that during the patient's recovery period, the wound should not be washed with water as there is a risk of introducing another infection. After some time, Tyler comes to his senses, seeing in front of him a small barrier of ferns, illuminated by the bright sun. Tyler covers his face with his hand, looking around and trying to figure out where he is. He realizes that he is relatively safe on the shore and notices Sophia on duty next to him. Sophia notices that Tyler has woken up and approaches him, carefully examining him. She offers him to drink coconut juice, saying that he is severely dehydrated. Tyler drinks coconut juice and asks Sophia how long he's been out. Sophia tells him that he was unconscious for almost 20-0-0, after which he examines his wound and notices that it is bandaged. Sophia turns away from him and quickly tells him that she bandaged him and he thanks her. Tyler realizes that his wound has been cleaned and asks Sophia where they found the source of water, to which she asks him not to ask unnecessary questions. Tyler insists and asks her what they used to clean his wound. Sophia is embarrassed and tells Tyler not to worry, adding that they cleaned his wound with urine. Tyler regrets that he himself did not remember such an effective method, saying that they did the right thing. In response to Sophia's question about whether he is angry with her, Tyler says that she saved his life, adding that he has no reason to be angry with her. 
Sophia says that she was afraid that his wound might become inflamed, so she volunteered to look after him. Tyler thinks about it and admits to himself that he can count on one hand the number of people who could care about him as much as Sophia did. Tyler thanks Sophia for her hard work, to which she asks him not to speak so formally. Sophia reminds him that he saved her life several times, and she just patched him up a little. Tyler tries to rise up on his elbows, but he fails and asks Sophia for help. Alex notices Tyler's awakening and approaches him, asking him how he is feeling. Alex tells Tyler that he can come to him with any problems. Tyler says he understands Alex, thanking him for his help and concern. Two girls approach Tyler, one of whom greets him and introduces herself as freshman Elizabeth. The other girl is shyly silent, so Elizabeth introduces her as Clara, saying that she saved her life. She thanks Tyler for the roast pork, much to his confusion. Alex explains to Tyler that yesterday, late in the evening, they made a fire, which Elizabeth and Clara then noticed. He adds that Clara was separated from her husband and children during the shipwreck and still does not know what happened to them. Tyler reassures Clara, saying that if they got to this island, then sooner or later they will definitely meet them. Elizabeth says she was told about Tyler's feet yesterday, adding that she had no idea he was so tough. Sophia confronts Elizabeth about how she's just a freshman and doesn't study with them, asking her why she talks like she knows Tyler. The girls begin to argue, and Tyler argues that there must be many more survivors on the island than he originally thought. Turning his head to the side, he notices that Charles is lying unconscious, also surrounded by ferns. Alex tells Tyler that what Charles did was unacceptable, and he got what he deserved, but they should leave things as they are so that it doesn't interfere with their survival. Tyler gets to his feet and agrees, making a mental note that he doesn't care about Charles as long as he behaves decently. Sophia is distracted from her pointless arguments with Elizabeth and notices that Tyler is back on his feet. She approaches him and advises him to rest since he has not yet recovered, but Tyler replies that his wound has already healed. Alex invites Tyler on a tour to show him what they did while he was unconscious. Alex says that thanks to the stone spear tips made from flint, they were able to start a fire. He also says that they dug a special hole and put the meat there so that it would not spoil in such a hot temperature. Alex sits down by the fire and hands Tyler the meat, saying that they hoped to attract ships or planes passing nearby with the smoke. However, it didn't work out. Sophia tells Alex that everything didn't turn out so bad as thanks to the fire they were able to meet Elizabeth and Clara. Realizing that they still have an unresolved dispute, Sophia and Elizabeth begin to stare at each other darkly again. Tyler looks around and notices strange activity in the bushes that attracts his attention. Behind the trees, a group of people was observed by a man who quickly ran away into the thickets after noticing Tyler's gaze. Tyler jumps to his feet, quickly picking up his bone knife from the ground. Sophia approaches Tyler, asking him what has him so worried. Tyler scans the thicket closely, telling his friends that someone is there. Tyler points the knife towards the thicket and loudly orders the observer to show himself. No one responds to Tyler's commands, and the group only hears the usual jungle noises. Sophia asks Tyler if he was imagining things since he is still recovering from his wound, to which he replies that there is definitely someone there. Tyler loses his temper, raising the knife above his head, and yells at the would-be bystander to get out immediately. In response to Tyler's orders, a man slowly emerges from the bushes, saying in English that he is alone and unarmed. Sophia examines the man, assuming that he is one of the survivors. Alex raises his hand and greets the man friendly in English. Tyler senses something wrong here, mentally asking himself how this man could survive in the jungle alone. The foreigner quickly moves his head around and greets the rest of the group. Alex asks the foreigner if he is one of the surviving passengers of the Jemchujina cruise ship. The foreigner replies that he was also on the ship Pearl, introducing himself by the name Jack. Alex shakes Jack's hand and says his name, while Sophia admits to herself that she understood quite a bit from their conversation. Tyler approaches Jack and asks him in English if he was alone all this time. Sophia is amazed at how clear Tyler's American English is. Suddenly, she remembers that he had the lowest score in English at university. Jack replies that there were two of them, but his girlfriend was unable to swim to shore. Sophia regrets that reality and films are too different. She imagines that in reality Rose DeWitt would have survived, but would have drowned along with the Titanic. Sophia approaches Jack saying that not everyone would survive such a shipwreck, 
adding that he was blessed by God himself, so he should be grateful that he survived. Jack thanks Sophia for her kind words and asks how many people there are in the group of survivors. Alex replies that all the survivors are in front of his eyes and there is no one else in their group. He also points to Charles saying that there is one wounded in their group. Jack asks if the wound is serious, wondering what happened to Charles. Alex admits that it's deep early and they don't know if Charles will be able to get out. Jack decides to help the wounded man and rummages through his pockets for the necessary things. He takes out anti-inflammatory drugs, saying that perhaps this will help Charles with his recovery. Alex picks up the pills from Jack and asks him where he found them. Jack replies that he was just a tourist in China, so he was a little out of tune with the weather and caught a cold, so he went to the pharmacy and bought these pills. Alex says that he will only need five tablets, mentally reasoning that now each such tablet costs tens of thousands of yuan. Jack says Alex can take all the pills, adding that he's healthy now and doesn't need them. Clara thanks Jack, to which he replies that it's all nothing and she has nothing to thank him for. Alex asks Jack if he is hungry, inviting him to join them. The whole group, in the company of Jack, sits down by the fire and begins to roast pork. Jack looks closely at the meat skewered on a wooden skewer and asks others who it is. Sophia answers Jack honestly, saying that it is wild boar meat, to which he asks them where they got it from. Sophia says that they killed him in the forest, clarifying that Tyler was doing all this. Jack carefully examines Tyler and decides to hold off on asking questions. Alex asks Jack if he would like to join their group. Without thinking twice, Jack, smiling, replies that he would be happy to join them. Alex welcomes Jack as a new member of the team, to which he responds with gratitude for being accepted. Meanwhile, Elizabeth and Sophia again begin to sort things out between themselves. After some time eating, Tyler decides to talk to Jack and asks him about what he ate after he got to the island. Jack tells Tyler that he found a lot of mushrooms and berries in the forest, specifying that he has been eating them for two days. He also says that he found a stream in the forest with clean water suitable for drinking. All the group members listen to him carefully, intrigued by the idea that there is fresh water on the island. Alex asks Jack if he remembers where the stream is. Jack happily tells Alex that he remembers his location perfectly. Alex rubs his hands and asks Jack if he can show them where he is. Jack replies that he can show the location of the stream, but Tyler says that they were already in the forest and did not see any stream there. Jack says that in fact this stream is not so easy to find because it is covered by thickets. Tyler asks Jack how he found the stream if it was covered in thickets. Jack admits that he accidentally stumbled upon the stream while exploring the island. Tyler wants to continue interrogating Jack, but Sophia interrupts him by gently touching his arm. She quietly tells Tyler that they can check if there really is a stream there by going there to explore. Tyler reflects on the fact that it is not so easy for the average person to find edible mushrooms and berries in order to survive for two days eating only them. Tyler is also confused by the fact that Jack only ate one portion of meat despite eating only plants for several days. Alex tells Jack that the whole team has high hopes for him in finding this stream. Tyler gets to his feet and says that he and Jack will go exploring alone. Sophia dissuades Tyler, telling him that he has not yet recovered from his injury. Jack notices that Tyler is injured, and he says that he received a small wound while killing a wild boar. He asks Jack if he is worried that he will be the one going to look at this stream with him. Jack calmly tells him that he doesn't mind at all and calls him along, after which they retire into the thickets. Tyler asks Jack how long they have to go, to which he replies that they are almost there. Jack asks Tyler how his injury is and says they could take Alex and the others with them, assuring that it wouldn't slow them down. Tyler says he's fine, noting that the rest of the group would only get in the way, mentally admitting to himself that it would be too dangerous to take the girls with him. After 20 minutes of traveling through the jungle, Tyler again asks Jack how far they still have to go, to which he again replies that they are almost there. Tyler tells Jack that he said the creek was a half hour away, but it's been over 40 minutes. Jack says that he was a little mistaken, assuring that they are indeed already very close. Jack comes out to a small clearing, saying that they have arrived, and Tyler notes that he doesn't even hear the sound of running water. Tyler asks Jack where exactly the stream is, to which Jack says that it is at the bottom of this hole. Jack approaches a hole lined with stones and invites Tyler to look down for himself. Jack says that the stream is located right at the bottom of the sinkhole, suggesting that it is some kind of groundwater. Tyler looks down carefully, 
but what he sees turns out to be far from looking like a stream of water. Taking a closer look, Tyler discovers that at the bottom of the hole there is a huge pile of human bones. Suddenly he hears two people coming out of the bushes, shouting at them in English. One of the two newly arrived people wishes Tyler to go to hell in English and grins evilly. Before Tyler can get his bearings, Jack pushes him in the back. Unable to keep his balance, Tyler falls like a stone down a huge pit with human bones. Tyler lands on a pile of human bones with a deafening crunch. The main character carefully checks himself for broken bones and new wounds. While he is doing this, he hears that the newly arrived people say hello to Jack. Jack tells his accomplices that there are four women and three men in the settlement, one of whom is seriously wounded. Jack adds that given that they have already dealt with Tyler, they only have one man left to kill. Jack's accomplices praise him for his excellent work, saying that he did a good job. Leaving, Jack tells his accomplice that the survivors have supplies of wild boar meat, assuring that they should last for at least a couple more days. Tyler realizes that Jack has been deceiving them all this time, and in fact he was not alone on the island. He notes that fortunately both his arms and legs still obey him, which means he can try to get out of here. After feeling his back, Jack makes sure that his spine is not broken either. Tyler notes the huge number of bones that surround him and understands that Jack and his accomplices will not stop at him and will definitely go after Sophia and the others. The main character understands that if he cannot get out of here, then they certainly will not be able to cope with the bandits without his participation. However, despite all his efforts, Jack falls back onto the pile of bones, realizing that he cannot even get up. Gathering all his strength into a fist, he turns over with difficulty and decides to gradually crawl along the crunchy bones. He looks around and tries to figure out what is going on here, looking around the entire pit. In the corner of the pit, he discovers a small lake and a snag lying next to it, on which something unusual is growing. Taking a closer look, Tyler realizes that a large longevity mushroom has grown on the damp driftwood, which can help him. Tyler tries to crawl, but incredible pain permeates his entire body, preventing him from moving, and he falls again. Having regained his strength a little, he decides to continue crawling at all costs and begins to move slowly. Tyler ponders how much infection could have accumulated on these bones during all this time, adding that he needs to hurry up, otherwise he will come down with a fever again. Tyler tells himself that only this mushroom can help him now since it has an anti-inflammatory effect and copes well with poisons. Tyler continues to crawl towards the mushroom with difficulty, while a dangerous poisonous centipede crawls towards him. However, he quickly notices her and uses the skull lying nearby to crush the dangerous insect with one blow. Finally approaching the mushroom, he notes that its surface is usually covered with spore powder and has rough edges, adding that its color should be darker. Based on Tyler's observations, this mushroom should be smooth and shiny, and also has a brown color, which makes it possibly dangerous to eat. However, Tyler realizes that he has no other options and tries to push the disturbing thoughts out of his head. Tyler touches the mushroom, noting that although it is not so soft, it does not look like stone. Tyler continues to study the mushroom and notes that it has no odor, which is quite unusual for a mushroom. However, Tyler decides to properly prepare for the possible consequences and takes some time to gather his strength. Having gained strength, Tyler quickly bites his teeth into the mushroom cap and bites off a piece. Having completely consumed the mushroom, Tyler lies down on the ground, feeling that his body has reached its limit and noting that the longevity mushroom only seemed bitter to him at first, hoping that it will help him. However, a split second later, an incredible spasm constricts Tyler's throat, making it difficult to breathe. From the incredible burning sensation running through his entire body, Tyler begins to roll back and forth on the ground, trying to somehow endure this unbearable agony. In attacks of incredible suffocation and heat, he turns his attention to the lake of water located next to him. With incredible difficulty, Tyler crawls to the lake, clinging to his life with all his might. After tasting the water, Tyler realizes that it is fresh water and completely immerses his face in the water. After drinking a lot of water, Tyler kneels and screams loudly from the strange sensations overwhelming him. Tyler feels like all his insides are burning and at the same time permeated with incredible cold. During the next attack of transformation of his body, Tyler again emits a loud scream, scaring all the birds surrounding the pit. Meanwhile, 
Jack and his accomplices capture almost the entire group of survivors and advise Alex to surrender, telling him that he cannot defeat everyone alone. Jack mockingly doubts that Alex has any fighting skills to stop them. One of his accomplices tells Jack to stop being nice to him and just finish him off. Meanwhile, Tyler's attacks subside and he finally feels relatively calm. He sits down on the ground, admitting that he felt like he was going to burn alive right in that pit. Suddenly, Tyler realizes that with the passing of the attacks, his body was filled with incredible lightness and strength. He examines his body again and notes that his wounds have gradually begun to heal and the pain has completely subsided. Suddenly his thoughts are interrupted by the deafening singing of birds, which he has never heard before. Tyler turns to the side and watches the exit from the hole, trying to figure out what kind of bird was making such a loud song. Looking at the surface of the pit, to his surprise, he clearly sees a small beetle crawling on a blade of grass near the surface. Tyler notes that something has happened to his vision, however. Now is not the time to think about it, since he needs to get to the surface quickly. He examines the walls of the pit in search of ledges and sees that the vine is about four meters away and it will not be so easy to get to it. However, Tyler notices that the walls of this pit are not so smooth, suggesting that if they are dry, he can try to climb them. Having touched them, Tyler realizes that they are quite wet and also covered with a dense layer of moss. Nevertheless, Tyler does not give up and begins to slowly climb up, grabbing the ledges with all his might. Tyler tells himself that now, under no circumstances, should he fall down and continues to climb up to the exit. After a few meters, Tyler's foot slips, and he notes that his arms, unlike his legs, seem to be attached to these stones. Tyler firmly grabs another ledge with his hand and carefully pulls himself towards it. Tyler feels that something has changed in him, reflecting that, in addition to his vision, the other four senses are also greatly enhanced, which means that he ate an unusual longevity mushroom. Tyler is very sorry that there was only one mushroom, but he interrupts his thoughts when he realizes that he has crawled to a place where he can grab onto the vine. Exhaling in relief, he grabs the vine with his hand and begins to climb to the long-awaited exit. Meanwhile, one of Jack's friends decides to finish off Alex and jumps on him, swinging his club. Alex manages to react and block a serious attack with his spear, placing it in front of him. The other members of Jack's squad decide not to play the joust and join their comrade, simultaneously attacking Alex from different directions. One of the attackers manages to seize the moment and delivers a heavy blow to Alex's arm, knocking him off balance. Alex falls to the sand, no longer able to hold the weapon in his hands. Alex looks at his offenders with a murderous look and calls them all scoundrels. One of Jack's accomplices laughs heartily, amused that Alex is still resisting, and then orders his allies to finish him off. While the bandits approach Alex, he turns his attention to Sophia, noting her attractive appearance. He holds Sophia close to him, saying that her soft, pale skin indicates that her meat will be very tasty. Sophia tries to break free from the thug's grasp, telling him he's disgusting and telling him to get away from him. The bandit just smirks before pushing forward with force, causing her to fall face first into the sand. The bandit approaches Sophia and begins to tear her clothes while she loudly screams for help. The thug tells Sophia that no one will help her, since her friend is most likely dead, and she herself will soon meet him, but first he will make her beg for death. Sophia replies that she does not believe that Tyler could die and demands that the bandit not touch her. Suddenly a stone flies into the bandit's head with a deafening whistle, stunning him and forcing him to let go of Sophia. Jack looks around and orders the one who threw the stone to come out immediately for his own good. However, in response to the bandit's requests, only the background noise of the jungle and the rapid rustling of leaves can be heard. Jack says that he does not know the identity of the one who threw the stone, but suggests that he go out in an amicable way, otherwise things will take a very bad turn. Suddenly it begins to move faster and Tyler flies out of it at great speed, caustically greeting the bandits in French. All the survivors joyfully greet Tyler, not believing their own eyes. The bandit holding Sophia turns towards Tyler, telling him that he didn't expect to see him alive after falling into the pit. After these words, he snatches the bone knife from Jack's hands and heads towards Tyler. Screaming that Tyler crawled out of the hole in vain, the bandit rushes at him with a bone knife. The bandit deals a heavy blow with a knife. However, Tyler easily dodges him, moving a few centimeters from the line of his blows. 
Without allowing the bandit to come to his senses, he delivers a powerful blow to the bandit's body from the side, breaking several of his ribs. Maddened by the shock of pain, the bandit tries to strike Tyler again with a sweeping lunge. However, Tyler jumps and dodges the blow. Tyler delivers a crushing kick to the bandit's face, knocking him out and sending him flying. The bandit plows his body through several tens of meters, after which he remains lying on the ground, unable to rise. Without allowing the enemy to come to his senses, Tyler overtakes him and delivers a powerful finishing blow with his elbow. Tyler's blow lands squarely on the opponent's larynx, causing it to suffer serious damage. Tyler moves away from the suffocating bandit, who has no choice but to die painfully, lying on the sand. Jack fearfully asks Tyler what he did to his comrade. Tyler replies that he crushed his larynx and now he can't breathe and his fate is sealed. Jack mentally admits to himself that he cannot believe that Tyler is so strong even despite the fact that he was pushed into the hole a few tens of minutes ago. Jack tries to divert Tyler's attention by begging him for mercy, saying that he is giving up and is not going to harm him. Suddenly he asks his accomplices why they are standing still and doing nothing, ordering them to finish off Tyler. The bandits attack Tyler with dozens of blows, but none of them reach their target. Tyler notices that his opponent's movements look like they are being filmed in slow motion. Tyler feels that he has become so fast that he can now predict all their movements by the sound of their steps. Tyler decides that it's time to stop experimenting and jumps back from his opponents using a backflip. He grabs his bone knife, mentally glad that he has found it again after a short separation. Focusing all his newfound strength, Tyler throws a bone knife at his opponent. The knife hits the neck of one of the bandits, mercilessly cutting his skin and flesh. Tyler decides not to give his opponent a second advantage and quickly runs towards his stricken opponent. Having caught up with his enemy, he coolly yanks his weapon from the thug's body. Tyler easily continues to dodge all the attacks of his opponents, looking for a window to kill the next thug. One of them sets himself up, striking Tyler and opening himself up to him. Tyler immediately takes advantage of his opponent's vulnerability and brings the bone knife down hard onto the back of his opponent's head. Another thug watches in horror as his comrade falls lifelessly, his blood spattering the sand around him. Tyler notes that if his knife were made of steel, then the bandit's head would already be lying separately from the body. The thug decides to take advantage of Tyler's momentary delay and rushes to the attack, screaming, However, Tyler playfully dodges the enemy's attack, again moving to the side a few centimeters. Tyler decides that the fight has gone on for too long and it's time to put an end to this daycare. Taking advantage of the bandit's clumsiness, Tyler strikes him with a powerful elbow to the body, knocking him off balance. The bandit, without even having time to understand what happened, lets out a loud cry of incredible pain and falls to the ground. Tyler stands over the defeated enemy and watches what actions he will take. The bandit rises on his elbows and looks at Tyler with genuine horror, trying to offer him something. However, the bandit is interrupted by a spear blow that pierces right through his chest. Alex loses his temper and begins to strike the bandit blow after blow, shouting for him to die quickly. Even the painful death of the bandit does not stop Alex, and he continues to strike the already numb corpse. Tyler tries to stop Alex by grabbing him and telling him that enough is enough. Hearing nothing out of anger, Alex turns to Tyler, not recognizing him, and tries to hit him. Tyler intercepts Alex's blow, telling him to calm down, repeating that it's him. Alex gathers his thoughts and calms down, trying to understand what he has done. He turns around and sees the bandit's body terribly mutilated from the blows of his spear. Alex falls to his knees and screams loudly at the realization of what he did to a living person. He is surprised that he was able to commit a murder that was also so brutal but Tyler puts a calming hand on his shoulder. Tyler admits to himself that he is not at all surprised that Alex is in such a state, upset that he does not know how to console people. Unable to think of anything better, Tyler tells Alex that all these bandits deserve to die. Suddenly he turns around and notices that Jack, frozen in horror, is still there. Having come to his senses, Jack tries to escape, but Tyler asks him if he is sure that he can escape. Tyler approaches the dead bandit and pulls his bone sword from his head. Jack, horrified, tries to justify himself to Tyler, saying that he was forced to do this against his will. He admits that he did not want to push Tyler into the hole, but his accomplices forced him. Jack says that if Tyler lets him go, he will never tell anyone about what happened on this beach today. Jack falls to his knees and swears to Tyler that he will not tell Davis a single word about today. 
Alex hears Jack's conversation and is surprised that Jack might still have accomplices. He approaches Tyler and whispers to him that he needs to find out who Davis is. Tyler kicks Jack hard in the face, breaking his nose and knocking him to the ground. Jack grabs his nose and screams loudly, trying to hold back the blood gushing from there. Tyler informs Jack that he probably knows sharks are being introduced into these waters. The main character grabs Jack by the head and pulls him towards himself, not paying attention to his tearful requests and pleas. The timer enters the water, dragging Jack with him, who begs to be released and spared. Tyler pushes Jack's head into the water, causing the blood from his nose to be caught in the current. After holding Jack for a while, Tyler removes his head from the water, continuing to hold it tightly with his hands. Tyler shows Jack that the sharks have already smelled blood and are approaching him. Jack begs for Tyler's life, tearfully begging him and saying that he doesn't want to die. Tyler ignores Jack's pleas and grabs him by the shirt, pulling him a little closer to him. The main character tells Jack that he will give him just one chance, and if he lies to him even once, then he is dead. Jack turns around and notices the shark's tail fins approaching, and quickly agrees to tell him everything Tyler wants to know. Tyler asks Jack how many of his people are on this island. Jack looks away nervously and says that there were only five of them on this island. Tyler grabs Jack and walks further into the water with him as he assures him that he is telling the truth about there being only five people on their team. Tyler again asks Jack how many of his people are here, to which he honestly admits that there are more than 20 of them here. The main character asks Jack where the others are now, to which they answer that they are on the eastern shore. Tyler shows Jack the approaching sharks and tells him that they hang around here because they have already tasted human flesh and again advise him to tell everything about his accomplices. He adds that if he lies to him again, he will personally put his head in the shark's mouth. The rest of the survivors slowly come to their senses and gather near the shore not far from Alex. Alex, with anger in his eyes, asks Jack how many people he ate earlier. Jack admits that he's eaten about three or four people, adding that they've caught a lot in the last few days. Tyler asks Jack how many people they caught during this time. Jack replies that his boss, Davis, said they could keep some of the people to eat later. Alex loses his temper again and tells Jack that he and his cronies are just a bunch of cattle. Tyler asks Jack exactly how many people they captured, to which he replies that there are about 20 prisoners. Tyler says if his people are also about 20, then they could not feed only on people, to which Jack replies that people were a last resort. Alex runs into the water saying that Jack and his people don't have a drop of humanity, to which he replies that if they hadn't started eating people, they would have died themselves. Tyler suddenly comes behind Jack, grabs him and snaps his neck in the blink of an eye. Before Alex can get close, Tyler throws his lifeless body to the approaching sharks. The sharks begin their meal and Tyler quickly swims away, reaching the safety of the shore. Having got out, Tyler heads towards the girls who were watching everything that was happening in the distance, sitting on the sand. Sophia says that she is very glad to see him, while he takes off his t-shirt and hands it to the girl. He tells her that the t-shirt is a little torn but she can still wear it, to which she asks him what he will wear. Tyler turns around at the corpses of the lying bandits and decides to look among them for suitable clothes. Having chosen a suitable t-shirt, Tyler approaches the bandit's corpse and removes his clothes. Having thoroughly washed the t-shirt in seawater and washed it from traces of blood, Tyler puts it on himself. He approaches Sophia and asks her to quickly get dressed, to which she quickly agrees and puts on his t-shirt. Tyler and Alex watch as the sharks finish their feast, leaving behind only blood stains on the seawater. Alex tells Tyler that he shouldn't have killed Jack, because he could have gotten him to tell him exactly where his leader and the others were. Tyler turns to Alex and asks what he would do next with this information. Sally overhears their conversation and asks them if they are going to save people kidnapped by bandits. Alex says that this is all a good idea, but the leader, Davis, has more than 20 subordinates, which makes rescuing the prisoners very difficult. Sally asks him if they are going to leave everything as it is, adding that criminals could have captured their students. She turns to Tyler, asking him why he is silent, because he used to serve in the army, remembering that soldiers are supposed to protect the people who pay taxes to feed them. Tyler tells Sally that he served in the military not in China, but in another country as part of F Troop. They look at him with confusion, asking whether he is a citizen of the other side. Tyler replies that he is a Chinese citizen but served in another country in Special Overseas Troop F. 
Sally says that only 1% of all military personnel make it into such an army, emphasizing that the selection requirements there are simply incredible. Sophia asks Tyler what kind of squad this is, to which he replies that it can be perceived as a mercenary squad. Sally says that this is, however, the only overseas unit recognized by the Chinese government. Tyler recalls that he was promoted to sergeant after three months of training as a recruit. A year later, he was promoted to lieutenant and Tyler became the first soldier from overseas Troop F to be promoted to the rank of lieutenant in such a short time. If he had continued to serve in this unit, he would probably have become the first Chinese soldier to achieve such high results there. Tyler says he joined the force only to earn money and was never motivated by a sense of patriotism or duty to the Chinese army. He adds that nevertheless, his companions are right and these people cannot simply be abandoned noting that in any case, sooner or later Davis's people will come for them. Tyler mentally adds that he only ended up on this island because one person assigned him a task, because of which he had to desert from overseas squad F and pretend to be a third-year medical student. He tells his companions that they should not forget that they recently killed five of their squad, so they will definitely come for their souls. A group of survivors carefully examines the items left behind by Jack and the rest of the bandits. Alex approaches Tyler and asks him if he checked them when at the beginning he hinted that he was not going to save the prisoners. Tyler tells Alex that this is a very dangerous operation during which they will need to work together and if someone is not ready for this, then everything will collapse. He turns to Clara and suddenly asks her what her thoughts are about the upcoming operation. Clara looks into emptiness confused and then nervously replies that she completely agrees. Tyler mentally notes that at the moments when they discussed rescuing the prisoners, Clara was silent, adding that it seems to him that she is very afraid, however, she does not want to admit it. Alex says that Charles is still unconscious and they need someone who can look after him, suggesting Clara as the candidate. Clara agrees, saying that she will definitely look after Charles. She heads away from the group, saying she will check on his well-being. Alex approaches Tyler and says that first they need to find out where exactly Davis's people are based. Tyler replies that Jack has given them almost their exact location so it won't be difficult to find them, mentally adding that the real question is how to deal with them. Tyler asks Alex what time it is, to which he replies that it is about 13.00. Tyler says we need to start before it's too late and preferably now. He approaches Clara and gives her a spear saying that she will need it for both protection and to split coconuts. He adds that Clara can take meat out of the pit and roast it if she wants, to which she only modestly thanks him. Tyler says that all this cannot be put off until tomorrow, since the disappearance of five people from the team will make Davis wary. He adds that if they decide to release the prisoners, then they need to do it today, since they still have the element of surprise. Alex responds to Tyler, saying that this is sound logic and asks him what exactly they will do. Several hours later, Tyler and his squad carefully make their way through the jungle, armed with spears and a club. Suddenly, Tyler's attention is drawn to a strange sound, and he stops to listen to it. Alex approaches him with a question, but Tyler puts his finger to his lips and motions for everyone to be quiet. The entire group listens warily to the sounds of the jungle trying to figure out what caught Tyler's attention. Tyler tells the others that there is someone ahead, and they tightly grip their spears while looking around. The group looks ahead and hears a strange rustling of leaves, watching the unusual movement of the bushes. Tyler commands his squad to hide and not make any sounds. The entire squad does not understand what happened, however. They immediately obey Tyler and hide in the bushes. Among the noise of the jungle, the squad suddenly hears a man's voice asking someone to stop running. Curiosity gets the better of Sophia, and she decides to look through the bushes to see the source of the sound. Sophia sees a woman not far from her who is running away from a man, playfully flirting with him. The man catches up with the woman and pins her against a tree, telling her that he has caught her. He gently takes her chin and asks her about when she will break up with Jack, and asks him something about why he wants her to break up with him so badly. The man begins to stroke the woman, saying that if they break up with Jack, they won't have to hide like this. Sophia realizes that they are most likely talking about the Jack that Tyler recently fed to the sharks. Sophia sympathizes with Jack, sad that he was fighting for his life while his girlfriend was having an affair with another man. The man and woman clearly do not notice the heroes watching them and continue to play their love games. 
The sounds of their laughter and playful jokes spread through the forest for several tens of meters. But more importantly, the entire group of survivors clearly hears what the loving couple is going to do. Sophia shyly continues to watch them, not understanding why they are not embarrassed to do this in public. The long peeping session is interrupted by Tyler, who whispers to Sophia, embarrassing her. He takes Sophia by the shoulder and shows her the place where she needs to move so as not to give away their position. The couple begins to get carried away and moves on to something more serious, continuing to confuse onlookers. Tyler and the others sit silently, trying to figure out if there is anyone else in the area besides these two. Alex decides to break the silence and asks Tyler what they should do with this couple, assuming that they are from Davis's squad. Tyler suggests that Elizabeth, Sally, Sophia, and Alex pretend to be survivors passing by to distract them, and if they smell something fried, then run as fast as they can. Sophia asks Tyler what he will do while they are distracted. Tyler grins and says that during this time he will sit here and wait for the right opportunity. He says that if these two run after them, he will deal with them, and if they try to run for help, then he will cut off their escape route. 